Howdy campers and welcome to the very first tutorial of the best REST API series on YouTube and in this video I want to talk about what a REST API actually is. So first things first, I want to just make sure that you have a good kind of base understanding of JavaScript before you embark on this course because it is going to be quite JavaScript heavy. If you don't understand that then I would advise you to check out my JavaScript for beginners playlist. The link is going to be down below. Uh, secondly, it would be good if you did have an appreciation or a basic grasp of Node.js and MongoDB. We're also going to be using both of those technologies in this series. Now, this second one is not essential. I am going to be walking you through the whole process of setting up Node.js, MongoDB, right through to creating our Express app. Um, so you don't need to know it, but it would benefit you as you work your way through this tutorial if you knew what I was talking about all of the time. So if you want to check out my Node.js course and MongoDB course, first of all, you can do. I'll leave the links to both of those down below as well. So then, what is a REST API? Well, I think it's easier if we split this off into two, API and REST. So API stands for Application Programming Interface, and REST stands for Representational State Transfer. Now, that probably means absolutely nothing to you, so we're going to walk through these in more detail. So first of all, the API, right? And to explain this in more detail, I just want to abstract away from programming altogether. So imagine you've got a TV in your house. This is essentially an application, right? Now, if you want to interact with this application, if you want to change channels or you want to turn the volume up, what do you do? You reach for your remote control and you press the buttons. So this, in essence, this remote control is an interface for you to interact with this application, right? And this interaction is very human. You're actively um, pressing these buttons with your finger. So in essence, this would be an application human interface rather than programming. But if we take these concepts and now extend them into programming, then we have our application, which could be YouTube, right? And we want to interact with this application from our own application. For example, we want to reach out and grab a list of videos from a certain person's YouTube channel, right? Well, YouTube provides us with an interface so we can interact with it. And this interface, instead of being buttons on a remote control, would be a series of endpoints. So such an endpoint could look something like this to search for a particular video, right? So if we want to find some videos from the YouTube application, we're gonna use these endpoints and we're gonna use them from our code. So instead of mashing buttons on our remote, this time we're calling this application, we're using the interface from our code. So this time, instead of a human interface, it's an application programming interface, right? So much like your TV exposes a volume control or a channel control to you on your remote, a web app can expose a programmatic interface instead to us for us to use as developers, right? These different endpoints, and we use those in our programs. So some popular examples of APIs are the YouTube API, which we just talked about, Google Maps API, uh, Twitter API, or the Uber API. So for example, say as developers, we want to make an application where users can book a taxi through it, an Uber taxi through it. We can use the Uber API to do that. So what they're going to do is expose from their code base this API, a programming interface with different endpoints so that we can write code in our own application to interact with this Uber application and add that functionality to our app, right? For example, we could quite easily use a specific endpoint, make a request to this API to get a list of drivers within a given area. And we're going to retrieve that back in JSON format and then display that to our users on our application in whatever way we want. All right, so that's what an API is. So now we know what that is, let's just turn our attention to the REST part of REST API. So REST stands for Representational State Transfer, and that alone probably doesn't mean much to you. Uh, so if we break this down, basically, it's an architectural style of the web, right? It's a, a standard or a set of guidelines by which we can structure and create APIs. And we can identify REST APIs because they follow this kind of structure. They have these identifiable properties, if you like. So what are these properties? So the first one is that they make use of resource-based URLs, okay? So imagine we're just in a browser and we're going to a website, football.com forward slash scores. I don't know whether these are real URLs, by the way. I've just made these up. But anyway, imagine this URL right here gives us this web page and it's got a load of different scores on it. 
This, in essence, is a request for a resource, isn't it? The resource is the web page, a set of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's returning that to us, right? And this, in essence, is just a GET request. We're just requesting this data, and it's being processed through a browser. Or we could go to forward slash teams, forward slash arsenal, and that would send us a resource, a HTML page, right? So REST APIs follow the same kind of resource structure. So this time, if we want to interact with an API instead of navigating in a browser to the website, we could say, okay, we want some data from football.com forward slash API forward slash scores. So this might be an endpoint in this football.com API. And what it would do to us, instead of returning a web page that we can consume on a browser, it's going to return to us some data we can consume within our program, right? And do something with it. So it could return some JSON data. Same if we go to forward slash API, forward slash teams, forward slash Arsenal, that could return us some JSON data about the Arsenal team, right? So these are resources. It's resource based, if you like, okay? We're going to specific endpoints for different resources. The next property they have is that they make use of HTTP methods. So we've got four, really, four basic ones, get, post, put, and delete. And uh, we use get typically to retrieve data from a server, post to send new data to a server, put to update existing data already in a database, and delete to delete data, okay? So we're going to talk about each of these different requests later on, but these are the different HTTP methods that REST, API, uh, REST APIs use um, to interact with different applications. But these are the different HTTP methods that REST APIs use. The next property is that they make use of HTTP status codes. For example, 200 means everything was okay. 404, you probably see that when you go to a page and you can't reach it, that means the resource is not found. 500 means there's a server error and there's tons of different status codes. And we're gonna be using a few of these as we go along as well. So just a quick example here, I've navigated to my channel right here and this in essence is a GET request. We can make GET requests from our browser every time we type in an address right here to a specific resource, we're using a GET request to get that resource, right? And it's being displayed in our browser. Um, we would have a hard time doing POST requests or PUT requests or uh, delete requests through the browser, but we can use GET requests by just putting the URL up there to whatever resource we're looking for. So in this example, I'm going to my channel right here on YouTube, right? And if we examine this request right here, we can see the request URL. So it's this thing of types in the browser. Then we can see the request method is get, right? The status code is 200 because that means everything is okay. Cool. But what if I go to something that's not okay? If I just put a lot of garbage in here like this, this time I'm gonna get a page is not available. And if I click onto the URL that I typed in, you can see this is the thing I typed in right up here. This time it's a get request and it's 404 status code, which means that the resource cannot be found, okay? So that's what status codes are all about. So anyway, in this playlist, we're gonna learn about all these different HTTP methods and what they're used for. Get, post, put, and delete. Then what we're gonna do is create an API using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB from scratch. We're gonna test our API using software called Postman, which is really cool. I'm gonna show you that later. And then finally, what we're gonna do is create a simple front end to interact with our API, make requests to it. And that front end is gonna look something like this, where we can type in our location via latitude and longitude. So I'll just put some numbers in here, find ninjas, and that's gonna to return to us any ninja that's in a certain radius to us, okay? So it's got the name of the ninja, the rank of the ninja, how far away it is from us, and this little icon red means it's not available, green would mean it is available for work. So that's the API we're gonna create, and this is the front end for that API, so we can make requests to it. Um, for this course, I've prepared some files. It's on this repo right here. I'm gonna leave the link down below. And there's a different branch for each lesson with code in it. So if you go to lesson 10, that's gonna give you the end code from lesson 10, and you can view that all here, okay? Um, two more things, I'm gonna be using Atom for my text editor. It's really cool and free, so you can go to atom.io to download that. And then I'm also gonna be using Commander or CMD, however you like to pronounce it, for my command line interface tool. So uh, yeah, you can download that as well, it's free, just go to this button right here. 
So there we go, that's your whirlwind introduction to REST APIs. In the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is get you set up with Node.js and MongoDB. If you enjoy these tutorials, please, my friends, do not forget to share, subscribe and like them. And I'm going to see you in the very next one.